Hi, I'm Susan Evans from SusanEvans.org and this is our Moon Unit Study. We are using Earth and Space by Bri Ideas Press and uh, the last four chapters of the book are about outer space. One of them gives a lunar observation chart and so what we did was we filled out each day for 28 days what the moon looked like outside. Now if you have a cloudy night or something you can either look it up on the internet or you can draw between those two days. So let's say you do this day and this day. Well, the one in between is obviously in between the two. So it's pretty easy to draw um, the moon in, the, in between times when it is cloudy. Uh, make sure that when you study the moon that you look up towards the moon. You can use binoculars to see uh, the beautiful uh, ridges in the moon, the, um, the craters and everything. Uh, and uh, if you have a telescope you can see it even closer. Uh, there's a lunar eclipse that's happening uh, next week um, and so try to figure out what you um, are uh, what kinds of things are happening uh, astronomically in your area so that you could take advantage of that. Now a great time to uh, look at the moon is when you have a full moon because then you can see the craters and everything on the moon. So we filled that in for a whole month and also in that same in the same book you have uh, the different kinds of um, uh, Moon, let's say new moon, waxing crescent moon, first quarter moon, waxing gibbous moon, full moon, waning gibbous moon, last quarter moon, and waning uh, crescent moon. And so you go through all these different um, uh, shapes and sizes of how the moon gets larger and then smaller and then larger and then smaller like this. Okay. Uh, and a fun hands-on activity from the book is to um, draw each of those uh, moons on uh, paper plates. And so we did that with crayon. So take a look at that activity. Here are the paper plates and what we've done is we have drawn with pencil what each of the phases of the moon is. And then I kind of put str uh, striation lines along the side um, and uh, for, for blacking out. And then with a, a black Sharpie marker, we drew on top of it. So kids of any age then can uh, fill it in. Uh, a full moon can be just, um, you know, a circle. And then a new moon, of course, you would fill it in with the black so uh, here we are ready to start coloring uh, the phases of the moon and we also got out a globe. So on one of our paper plates we are going to draw the earth which is going to be in the center and we will be putting all the other plates around it as the moon's phases. So here we are with the earth done on one of the plates. You just kind of look at the globe and make that. So here we are coloring the phases of the moon on the paper plates. Here we are with the finished paper plates in the uh, phases of the moon. So we have the uh, new moon which is completely black and so the kids can label that new moon. Now if your kids are, are, are super small you want to do this closer to the floor. Um, if you don't already have this mural, see we had this mural for our other earth and space video uh, in um, atmosphere unit study. So we already had um, all this uh, blue sky. You can also have black butcher paper that you can put up um, or you can get um, poster boards and, and uh, staple them up on your wall as a background for this. Okay? You can also put it on the floor or on the table and then label them so your kids can put the different labels on the different um, phases of the moon. So then we have the waxing crescent moon, the first quarter moon, the waxing gibbous moon, the full moon, the waning gibbous moon, the last quarter moon, the waning crescent moon, and back to the new moon. Now this is really super fun and exciting and especially if you have just filled out that chart 
where you have looked up into the sky and you see it waxing and waning. And so you can see if it's gibbous, which is getting, you know, kind of fatter or crescent. That's kind of like a banana, kind of like a little sliver. So this was a super uh, fun activity, very visual. You can do it with crayon or you can do it with marker or with paint. Uh, paint probably uh, looks the best and is the cheapest. However, it's the messiest. So we just use crayon, like the book said, and it looks great. So this is the paper plate activity for the phases of the moon. Another activity that we did besides the paper plates is to do the phases of the moon with Oreo cookies. Uh, you can find this all over the internet, so this was not my idea, um, and it wasn't inside the um, Earth and Space book either. However, I'm going to um, use the Earth and Space um, 28 days to do the Oreo cookies, which my kids cheered when they found out that they were going to have 28 Oreo cookies to, um, to do instead of only eight and so uh, take a look at that yummy delicious activity so what we're doing right now is we are making a chart uh, for the phases of the moon with Oreo cookies and so we've gotten a black poster board and a silver sharpie marker and a long um, ruler of some sort uh, meter stick can help and then of course you need at least one package of Oreo cookies. Make sure they're not crushed, so look at them through the package to make sure they're not crushed because you want whole Oreo cookies. And don't get double stuffed or you won't have enough maybe uh, if you have a few crushed ones, okay? So then, using the Bright Ideas Press um, chart, we are doing the phases of the moon with Oreo cookies. Here we have our lunar observation form which is similar to uh, what we have for the handout for Bright Ideas Press. And uh, we have seven across and four down. And it does not matter. You don't have to measure it exactly. As you can see, it looks like the ends ones are a little bit fatter than the others. So it doesn't matter. Just use a silver marker on black uh, poster board, and then you're ready to open up your Oreo cookies. Make sure the temperature of your room is not hot, so you might want to uh, turn on your air conditioner. And um, you, what you do is you twist to get them off because it stays on better. And I'm talking about the um, icing in the middle of the cookie. It stays on better if you twist it when you turn it. And so the ones that have all of the um, icing on them, those are like full moon, gibbous, and that kind of thing. And the ones that are not so good, you can use those for crescent moons and things like that. So just get out a, a table knife and go ahead and start carving. Okay, so we're carving off little bits of for the gibbous moons. And we're getting the cookies that almost have nothing on them for the little sliver moons. And here we are with our finished Oreo cookies, our lunar observation chart of the phases of the moon. Yum, yum. Thank you for watching our moon unit study.